Jim, thank you very much, and welcome to the Omni in Atlanta, everyone. East Tennessee State and the Michigan Wolverines. Game two here in Atlanta this afternoon. Oklahoma State has already moved on to Lexington. They will join Ohio State and North Carolina there. And welcome to the Omni. I'm Greg Gumbel. You know, one of the things that you have to take a look at is how people match up with the Michigan Wolverines. Here's Greg Dennis of Eastern Tennessee State. Well, their size poses a problem for us without a doubt. Uh, they're, they're similar to us in the fact that they have some very gifted athletes and guys that are, you know, able to do some, some things such as put the ball on the floor and, you know, go to the bucket and things. But right offhand, the problem is going to be their size. Quinn Buckner alongside me, East Tennessee State. Greg Dennis looking at that, but uh, Michigan has some problems matching up as well. Well, they've got problems because they've got to be concerned about the three-point shooting. That's the thing that got East Tennessee State here. These guys are not afraid to shoot the shot. When they do that, what they force you to do is spread out the offense, and you'll see they are a very unselfish team. They'll pass the ball to the open man. You see right here, Calvin Talford can knock it down. They have three or four different players that can shoot it. They penetrate. They kick the basketball. You see right here Nibley kicks it out to Rodney English. If you don't come out and guard them, they'll shoot the three. And then when you come out to guard them, now they're so quick that they can get around you, they can find other people. That's what Michigan has got to contend with. How do they, what you call, help and recover? East Tennessee State hit 13 of 25 from three-point land on Friday night. On the other side, though, you've got to contend with a couple of Michigan Wolverines, including the guy you like to call the man-child. <laughs> They've got five guys, first-year players on their team, and they're great players. But the player that you really have to watch out for is a guy at 6'9", about 240, and you worry about some of the things he can do inside, but he's got the ability to go outside, show some mobility, come at at you. Look at him. A little Irvin Magic Johnson with the look away and the finish by the other guy you've got to be concerned about, and that's Jalen Rose. Jalen Rose, number five, Chris Weber, number four, and they compose two-fifths of the starting lineup. The whole lineup, yeah, technically they're freshmen, but they like to think that with 29 games under their belt now, you're really looking at a bunch of sophomores. Take a look at the matchup problems that both sides were talking about. Rodney English and Marty Story at forward, Greg Dennis in the middle, Calvin Talford and Jason Niblett at guard. For Michigan, Chris Weber, Ray Jackson, Jawan Howard, Jimmy King, and Jalen Rose, the starting lineup for the Wolverines. Our officials for game two this afternoon, Frank Scagliata from uh, Penargil, Pennsylvania, Tom O'Neill from Tinley Park, Illinois, and Bob Barnett from Baltimore. There is Steve Fisher, 64 and 31 in his third year in Ann Arbor as head coach. And Greg, what he's been able to do is get his freshmen to really grow. And Alan LaForce is a guy who has been in basketball some 30 years or so, was looking for the opportunity to get things going, got the job when um, Les Robinson went to North Carolina State, and Alan LaForce has made this team not only a defensive team, but they are confident that they can shoot the outside jump shot and create their own tempo to come out from the top man-to-man. -to -man. Opening tap to Michigan. Rose inside. Chris Weber turn around. Doesn't go. Big rebound by Jackson. And he'll go to the line to shoot two. Well, Jackson is the guy that can really help them on the glass. Very good jumper. And he's a guy that I know wants to show everybody that he belongs a part of that group. He is also talented. Pressure. Foul is on Rodney English. Ray Jackson, a 6'6 freshman from Austin, Texas, had six points and grabbed six rebounds in Michigan's win on Friday over number 11 seed Temple. I think you'll see as, as Ray Jackson gets more mature, you'll see a lot more of what you just saw there. And made tonight, this afternoon, I should say, because he knows that he's got to get his points off of garbage, if you will, getting offensive rebounds, getting some steals, because they have enough people that they can go to in the floor of the offense. Now, East Tennessee State, it's important for them to get off the mark offensively, and there's a takeaway and a foul by Calvin Talford. Got his head up before he got the pass, and it popped in the air, and then he, he stopped Jalen Rose here. If he doesn't stop Jalen Rose, that's a fast play, because you can't afford to get Talford in foul trouble because he's probably the best all-around player in Athens. Two quick fouls on the Buccaneers of East Tennessee State. The lob doesn't work. And back 
out front. Weber chases it down. Talking to, to Coach Steve Fisher, one of the things Michigan wants to try to do is make sure that they continue what's happened to them the last six or seven games, or the last three or four games, to get that lead early. That, that's the way they don't have to struggle to get some offense. That's a mismatch that Michigan will exploit. Jawan Howard, very good down low. There's no way he can be guarded by Marty Story. The height is just too much in the favor of the Wolverine. Marty Story, 6'3", Jawan Howard, 6'9". Calper. That went off the mark. Jackson with his first rebound of the day. Michigan's real concern needs to be one of them. Will they stay patient? See, they can get that all day long. Now, the three-point shot is very important for East Tennessee because that is a chance that if I give up an easy hoop on the other end, I put pressure on you if I score a three-pointer. I don't put as much pressure on you to score two-pointers. Greg Dennis at 6'11 will also shoot the three for East Tennessee State. Story open. Now, that'll become a problem because either Jawan Howard's going to have a problem on one end or uh, Chris Weber will. But you got to come back and defend. The pass inside, almost taken away from Michigan. It belongs to the Wolverines. Ron Howard is one of the guys who said he started to take his time. You see right here, Story makes a mistake in going for the steal instead of staying behind Juwan Howard, even though he's taller by about four or five inches. You've got to make people shoot over you. Don't gamble, because if you miss it, it just makes it an easy basket. Howard grabbed outside by Marty Story. And that's the first foul on Story. Greg, it's very apparent that Michigan saw the Arizona game. The one thing that I thought Arizona did a poor job of was in their execution in terms of getting the ball on the strong side to either Mills or somebody down low. Then, as you see Juwan Howard drill a jump shot, swinging it back to the other side because the help goes to the strong side, and then the guy can post up very easily without any, anybody coming out on the weak side. Rodney English drives and tries to flip it back and doesn't quite get there. Weber trying to turn on his man, the short five, that's the bounce. <laughs> There's just no way. Dennis has got to make a decision. He's got to come out and guard. He, he can't be trying to get back to his man. You've got to make uh, Chris Weber pass the ball from there. This is Dennis faking Howard and blocked by Weber. I thought that was goaltending because he was standing on the basket when he came out to get it. Officials said no, let him play. Weber trying to go around Dennis, off the glass, two more. Well, they've got to, off to the kind of start they have at this point. You're trying to wait here to see can you get through with a, a timeout, but I, I'm looking to try to slow this one down because Michigan is, Michigan is in their rhythm. 12-3 Wolverine. They've got Jalen Rose guarding Calvin Calford, and that's a good move to keep Calvin from getting going. This is Rodney England facing up on Jackson. Inside, Dennis. That's how they break you down. If they make jump shots, they'll make it even that much more difficult for you. Weber, one-on-one -on -one against Dennis. That is just overpowering. I mean, because Dennis was there. And then it was straight up basket. Michigan, six out of seven from the field early on in this game. And a 14 to five lead. Dennis on the drive, and he got it, and he was fouled. We'll get a chance to take a look at that block to see if, he, if this is goaltending, because it looks like the shot is up. It's pretty hard to tell from that angle. It is. And this is what, what Dennis can do at 6'11. The, the thing that makes him most effective is that he can go inside outside he only weighs about 200 I, if i give him 210 i probably added three or four pounds to him he's not very big but he can go to the basket able to shoot the jump shot he's a 16 6 11 a guy you consider what they call a three man greg dennis at the free throw line where he shoots 78 percent Eastern Tennessee State's all-time leading scorer 15 53 to play here in the first half why did Hertz invent number one club goal service? To beat the rush hour.
see, every plane and everybody seems to land at once. But with goal service, there are no counters and no paperwork. You go nonstop to your car with your name and lights. Hertz, number one club goal. The best reason yet why Hertz beats the rush hour. Call Hertz today for low daily rates on Lincolns with free unlimited mileage. Hit Pizza Hut for a supreme pizza loaded with six delicious toppings like mouth-watering pepperoni, mushrooms, and green peppers. Right now, get a medium supreme for $7.99 and any other medium for just four bucks more. Get Pizza Hut tonight! A new arrival. A tire so special, it may last as long as you own your car. The new XH4. Congratulations. It's a Michelin. Where the deals and values are spectacular on every new old. Example, the new Achiever with Smart Lease. Just $1.99 per month. For 48 months and no down payment gets you an Achiever. With anti-lock brakes, automatic transmission, and air. The game clock is running, so net a great deal now. When the time comes that you need a hand with life insurance, let your Allstate agent work it out on paper, starting with your house and a policy to protect your mortgage. Of course, if your family's already filled out, your agent can help you fashion a plan for a college fund or for retirement that promises nothing but smooth sailing. So let your Allstate agent be your agent for life. You're in good hands with Allstate, a member of the Sears Financial Network. The coach's son writes a school play. Will it hit below the belt? I only have such a big stomach. I mean, it's just a play. It's a play about my stomach. It's an all-new Evening Shade, Monday. 15.53 to play in the first half. Greg Gumbel, Quinn Buckner, Curry Kirkpatrick at the Omni in Atlanta, Michigan, leading East Tennessee State by a score of 14 to 8. In the Midwest region, Cincinnati has beaten Michigan State to move on to Kansas City and the winner of the Kansas-UTEP game will join them. And some full court pressure now from the Buccaneers of East Tennessee State. But you see how they break it? They've got Jawan Howard bringing the ball down because they, they're going to try to see if they can get Jalen Rose the ball so he can have a dribble where he can be much more effective. They made a substitution. Eric Riley has come in for Chris Webber. Give him a break. Eric Riley is shot blocking. Jawan Howard's turnaround and number 30. Jerry Pelfrey comes down with the rebound for ETSU, and Dennis travels. They got her, tried to beat Eric Riley down the court, and in doing so, got, got himself, his, his mind had made up what he was going to do, and just took a step too quickly. But that, they're going to try that with Riley in the game. Game one here saw Oklahoma State shoot the lights out 80% from the floor. Torch it up is what they did. <laughs> Michigan with Rose, Riley, Jackson, King, and Howard on the floor. Inside the Rose. And he missed it. Here comes Niblet. Dennis into the lane. Not the best of shots for Greg Dennis. Bad shot. He was looking to try to make a pass and, and wasn't able to get it off. Inside. Howard. And Juwan Howard has eight points. They've got to start picking Juwan Howard up earlier on the lane. If you allow anyone to get down below the box on the lane, they'll score. It. That's Juwan Howard's strength, his ability to play on the block. Niblet, three-pointer doesn't go. And here comes Rose. They got numbers, and Rose will find the man. <laughs> I'm telling you, he'll find the man. He's got to put on the show. Jimmy King on the receiving end, and it's 18-8 to eight Michigan. Right now, let's send you back to New York and Jim Nance. Thanks, Greg. Boy, you can see King coming in from the wing for that one at a 10-point lead. Jimmy, how quickly time goes by. Last year, we were going to the regional. Remember, we were watching those Michigan kids play in high school, and here they are right now making a heck of a run in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, Rose and Weber were playing when we were in uh, the Silver Dome. Right. Now, let's travel out to Dayton for UTEP and Kansas. 15-39 to go first half. Uh, both teams... 
started out missing about their first five shots. What's the story looking like? Stacy Roy Williams saying, let's get over here and talk about this. Not happy right now. Both teams very good defensively. Keep people to low percentages, around 40, 41% for the two teams. Both started off real cold in this game. And UTEP really wants to keep you in an ugly type of game if they can. Well, one, one thing they do is that they're not going to put up any quick shots. That keeps the tempo tough for Kansas to yep. get running on their end of the floor. But then the other thing they do very well with their sound fundamentals defensively, one of the things Kansas breaks people down with a great backdoor cut, you don't get many against the Don Haskins club. Okay, in the East, in Wooster, nearing the eight-minute mark to go in the first half, and Kentucky has a nine-point lead over Iowa State. Cyclones with the basketball here, guys. They've been able to do it inside and out. Mashburn, the front-line guy, leading it. He has ten points for Kentucky. They've hit some threes, opened up four or five. Now they're six and nine from three. The Patino style, Billy, go up and down the floor. The pace of the game, very quick. Right where Kentucky wants. Yeah, just exactly the opposite of what we talked about in regard to the, the uh, game by UTEP. And you, you're Kentucky, you've got to take them out of the style that they want. And right now, Rick Patino's team playing exactly the way they want to do it. Looks like it's a 100-point pot potential type game. Yep. Kentucky playing on the 34th anniversary of its fourth national championship when they beat Elgin Baylor and Seattle. Okay, now, in the West, at Tempe. Southwestern Louisiana has a seven-point lead under four minutes to go in the first half. The Raging Cajuns, and what about the coaching matchup here, guys? Well, the thing here for the Raging Cajuns, Billy, a lot of the folks in the country don't know much about Southwestern Louisiana, but their head coach, Marty Fletcher, knows a little bit about championship teams, doesn't he? I guarantee you, as a high school assistant under Morgan Wooten at DeMatha, where they won national championships on the high school level, then with Norm Sloan at NC State. Sloan, of course, won a national championship. And some other guy we've and heard And a guy of. named Jimmy Valvano, who's <laughs> an assistant for him uh, at NC State, who did very well as, as well. Guaranteed to have a Cinderella into the regionals in the West as these two teams are 12 and 13 seeds. All right, East Tennessee State down 10 to the Fab Five, and let's go back to Greg Gumbel and Quinn Buckner. All right, Jim and company, thank you very much. 14-14 to play in the first half. Michigan off to the big start. East Tennessee State got off to a great start two nights ago against Arizona and was able to hang on. It's going to be interesting to see if they come around in this one. Well, it will be interesting to see. One of the things they've got to be concerned about East Tennessee, East Tennessee is not only making the jump shots, but they've got to maintain the, the legs because this is another team who had to expend a lot of energy to win their basketball game against Arizona, a lot of emotion, and they even got in very late. They played the last game, so, you know, that can be a factor here for East Tennessee. Eric Riley. And Rodney English comes down with the rebound, and Weber took it away from him and scored. Well, they're letting them play, because that's one that the officials normally call, but if they're going to play, just make that call for everybody, then that's fine. We are at the Omni in Atlanta with about 13 and a half to play in the first half, and it's 20 to 8 in Michigan. We've gotten off to a roaring start. Calford fouled from behind by Jalen Rose. Well, Greg, they've been coming out and, and playing great. The, the, the guy's worried about being a freshman. No need to worry because Jalen Rose, he has looked once. He now knows Ray Jackson is on the other side, and he just lobs it at the basket, and you can just see the finish right there. They know where each other are going to be. They're very confident. This is the most confident of one quietly. The other guy who's very confident is Chris Weber. He tells the team, you know, let's get it going. He becomes the guy that's much more vocal in the locker room. Out on the floor, Jalen Rose seems to be the guy that not only is their leader on the floor, but he's also their go-to guy. There is Jalen, the 6 8 freshman from Detroit. Here's Steve Fisher. Steve Fisher said yesterday he does not want to run with East Tennessee State for 40 minutes. But he may not want to run with him for 40 minutes, but it's hard to, to, to really harness the kind of talent that these young guys have in terms of running because they, they feel comfortable running. So they'll, they'll get out and do it. What, what has really improved for the freshmen has been their decision making. They know when not to take, they used to have like 20 turnovers, 20 or 30 turnovers. They're more apt to have less than 20, but about 10. Here come the Bucks. Number five is Eric Palmer. Not having made jump shots, you don't you see Michigan is in no hurry to go out to get them because they haven't made any jump shots, so they don't get any penetration inside an easy shot. King down the lane, dishes for Weber. Everybody can dig. 22 to 9, Michigan. 
This is still a team that shoots three-pointers, Greg, and, and as you know, anybody that shoots three-pointers, they can get going easy. Women's basketball scores flashing on your screen. There's a whistle and a foul on number three, Rob Polinka. That's number one on Polinka. Incidentally, any basketball fan will remember East Tennessee State's Keith, Mr. Jennings, and uh, Keith Paul from Germany earlier this week to wish the team luck in the tournament. Well, he can, can wish him all the luck. He's got to <laughs> wish him a three-point basket here. <laughs> That's what they need. But I talked to Calvin Talford about playing with, with as they call him, Mr. Jennings, with the Mr. And what he really liked about him is that Keith knew how to get people the ball when they could be effective. And, and, and that's the kind of play you need from a point guard, where guys can be most effective, get them the basketball and get out of the way. As you see, the full court pressure by East Tennessee. 22 to 11. Michigan with the lead. Jalen Rose for Riley. Oh, no. They no, took it away. It's a foul. Jalen Rose was out of control. And Greg Dennis, the fifth-year senior, got there in good position and took the charge. You see, Palenka does a good job. Center of the ball. Get in the middle. You see right here, the adult, Dennis is there. And they make the call right there that negates the basket and maybe get uh, East Tennessee State on a little bit of a roll. Second foul on Jalen Rose. That, that's a problem because you've you got to get him out of the game. He gets his third. He's the one that really leads him, so you want to get him out of the game. And if I'm East Tennessee, I try to go after him, especially with Calvin Talford. Palmer around Ooh. his man and off the glass <laughs> with a running floater. <laughs> Eric Palmer at 5'6", going up against Rob Polinka, who is 6'6", giving away a foot. Weber. Oh. And followed by Eric Riley. Well, that's just what, what not blocking out will do for you. They've gotten Juwan Howard out of the game. Get a little bit more active Eric Riley, who can go out and probably guard Dennis a little bit better. Riley, a seven-foot junior from Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, that's a three-point from the NBA three-point line. And Riley comes down with it. Here comes Michigan. And a traveling violation on Polinka. And he had he had little Eric Palmer right under him. Let's take a, take a closer look at Eric Palmer and what speed can do for well, you. You can see what speed he can do. And I watch him. He just kind of pops out of there and just gets that one off the glass. And then he kind of slides down, ready to go back in the action. Steve Fisher does have Jalen Rose over on the bench now, and number 14, Michael Talley, is into the lineup. Michael Talley is a 6'1 junior who did not play two nights ago due to a groin injury, but Steve Fisher feels he needs him. He needs him because they've got to have some small, quick people to guard, uh, to guard the, young, the small players from East Tennessee State, but the problem will show up for Steve Fisher when they get a turnover here, which is, is one of the good things. King. Oh, I'm telling you, that is some kind of body control because Palmer shut him off and he's still, and King's still able to go in the air and get a shot. But what I was going to say is Michael Talley is going to get tired because he hadn't practiced in a while. He worked out a little bit yesterday, but he hadn't been in shape, you know, to come back and play after being out for a while. 26-13 Michigan. Dennis open for the three. You know, it's just a matter of time. Weber back with the short hook. This is beginning to resemble a little bit the track meet we expected, 28-16. Yeah, but if, if East Tennessee could still trade three for two, they got Chris and Weber inside. That foul is on Chris Weber with an elbow. Well, you see, watch this. Eric Palmer gets there and just tries to get in front of him, and he just pulls straight up. He was going to go to the basket, and King saw Palmer get in front of him and just went up. And then Palmer moved at the last minute, and with so much height on the jump, King is able to glide to the basket. I'm telling you, on a, at a dead run, to be able to stop like that and control yourself and still be able to go under control is extremely difficult to do. Niblet back into the lineup. This is where the Palfrey would be one they would go to, but for Blinker, he, he would have trouble guarding him all day long. 28-18. Polinka open and hits the three. Now you're seeing a little bit of what Tennessee, East Tennessee State was doing happening to them. 
they're not coming out guarding people on the lane. And if they don't, you see Michigan is shooting it well enough that they got good things going. Now Michigan will be able to put it on the ground. English down the lane. And ETSU appears to have shaken its early game jitters. 31-20, Michigan. Polinka again. Still enjoy it, too. <laughs> I mean, so that was deep. <laughs> yeah, you got to get out and find him. He's, he's still that was way up. Coming up on nine minutes to play here in the first half. Too much time with the basketball. That's five seconds. That's too much time with the basketball. You don't need to be standing out there trying to beat somebody one-on-one. -on -one. The way you got here is moving the basketball. Alan LaForce asking exactly the same thing and wants to send Jerry Pelfrey into the lineup now for ETSU. Jerry Pelfrey into the East Tennessee State lineup. Tally Chris Weber. Ray Jackson, Jawan Howard, and Rob Polinka on the floor now for Michigan. And there's a giveaway by Polinka. Here comes Mobley. Great control. Very good control. He timed it just as time as time as possible. Steal from Tally. Controlled it in, in for the easy hoop. So he's playing one on one. He cannot guard Jawan Howard. Weber. Three pointer. <laughs> Big fella shot that one, came back, gave a little to team, and kept going. 15 points for Chris Weber already. Story had the handle, lost it, out of bounds. That's a good call. Michigan. That's but Chris Weber's the one that goes on the floor for that one to make that start. Michigan this is the giveaway by Polinka. Exactly. Polinka throws it away. Watch the attempt to steal. Tally does. Right there. And Nibley anticipates it and able to stay in control to get it in the basket. But they've got to get more plays like that. But you saw the good diving effort by the guy they consider their man and Chris Weber. And when that happens, everybody else will up their level of effort and, and make sure that they're playing hard. East Tennessee State, six turnovers. Jawan Howard. The matchups inside are killing East Tennessee State. And, it, and they're not doing anything on the other side. Their quickness has been negated by the good ability of the Michigan players. Jerry Pelfrey. Story with the rebound, and he'll go to the line to shoot two. They got Juwan Howard, I believe, on that one. Jerry Pelfrey in action here for East Tennessee State. His brother, John, playing against Iowa State today. 7.39 to play first half. Michigan leading at 39 to 22. And Marty Story at the line to shoot a couple. Marty Story and his teammates are going to have to get their, their collective jump shots going because they haven't been able to get it moving and not been able to stop anybody on the other end. Alan LaForce knows that he's got to stop Michigan because they have the height advantage and the, the young men from Michigan have been patient. They're not rushing the shot. And that's what you have to be able to do. Stay patient because you know you'll get good shots. Give you an idea of how East Tennessee State knocked off Arizona 87 to 80. East Tennessee State shot 13 for 25 in three-pointers two nights ago. The women's final four in two weeks on CBS. A mistake was made. Okay, we forgot. We overlooked it. Say you need something said overnight. There are a few companies you can call. But say you need it Saturday morning, guaranteed. There are two. But only one is so efficient. Bobby, just give me a couple of minutes. They get it there on time for far less, which is why to some, right. there is only one. UPS. You can say that Microsoft Windows makes the world a better place. A nation more productive. A business more profitable. But really, Microsoft Windows just makes your everyday work easier. Isn't that the point of personal computing anyway? Microsoft Windows. 
first week at the Lake Edna KFC, there were two incredible occurrences. One was the long-awaited introduction of new skin-free crispy chicken. People were astonished that skin-free chicken could be so crispy and juicy, astounded over the deep marinated taste. And the UFO is interesting, too. Get three great kinds of chicken, including new skin-free crispy in a variety bucket, just $9.99. The juiciest deal in Lake Edna or your neck of the woods. Oldsmobile knows that all your roads won't be sunny roads. That's why the all-new Oldsmobile 88 Royale LS offers you advanced traction engineering. The combination of anti-lock brakes, traction control, and road-holding front-wheel drive. The three elements to beat the elements. Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. The Oldsmobile drive to the Final Four Celathon. It's your best shot for a great deal now. You are watching the NCAA Basketball Championship on CBS. Back at the Omni in Atlanta, 7.39 to play in the first half. Michigan off an outstanding shooting performance thus far. Boy, we saw Oklahoma State rip away for 80% shooting in the first game. And Michigan is shooting at a 74% clip so far today. Well, they've not only been staying busy, they've gotten 24 out of their 39 points in the paint, as you would expect. So they've been able to stay, do what they need to do. And they've also been very effective at not allowing any uncontested shots on the part of East Tennessee State. Chris Weber on the outside. Seven minutes, 18 seconds to play in the first half. Michigan off a hot shooting performance from the get-go. Leading East Tennessee State by 15. Great, they've been patient, just very, very patient. And everybody wanted to know with the freshmen, and they like to consider themselves the sophomores because of the end of the year, whether they could be patient as a team like East Tennessee State. We'll find out they're too patient, though. They got four seconds on, ooh, on the 45-second clock. Jackson almost had the tap up. Great save by James Bosco. And Chris Weber converts. Those are the kind of plays East Tennessee State needs to make, and you can see that Michigan has gotten themselves focused, doing what they need to do. They've got to make those plays as well. Chris Weber has 17 points already. Jalen Rose has been on the Michigan bench ever since he collected his second foul. I'm telling you what Michigan is really doing. They've got a hand in the face, and, and they've got somebody all over the basketball anytime it's near scoring territory. That foul will be on Bosco, number 32. That's his first. And in the lineup now for East Tennessee State is Rodney English and Calvin Talford. So it's English, Talford, Marty Story, Greg Dennis, and Jason Niblett for East Tennessee State coming into this record, into this tournament with a record of 23 and six, the regular season and Southern Conference Tournament champion. I'm sorry, he's coming in to shoot a foul shot and I mean Steve Fisher just absolutely <laughs> went crazy. And the official finally caught it because Steve Fisher, all of his assistants were up saying that Pelfrey should be shooting the foul shot. Excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> uh, uh, there's no way Talbot should shoot it, he wasn't in the game. Jerry Pelfrey with a 72% free throw percentage takes to the line and let's send it to New York and Jim Nance. Jim? All right, Greg, again, we want to travel a little bit here. How about uh, Mike real quick, Michigan in this first half? What can you say? Inside out, killing them, putting on basically just the show. They're red hot and Weber has been unbelievable, Billy. He has, he has 17 points already and not only that, he's had a flare in this particular game. Jim, I'm going to give you credit for thinking that you said that uh, Michigan would be on fire in this game and they certainly have been. The winner will play Oklahoma State. Meanwhile, in the East, one minute, 18 seconds to go in the first half, and Kentucky's on fire also. Look at it, 57 points, and it's not even halftime against Iowa State. We talked about a Kentucky pace early in this ball game. They're 8-12 to 12 from three. Mashburn inside, doing it outside, forcing turnovers. Iowa sh State, Billy, is shooting the lights out, and they're still down nine points. They have played four games. They've scored 100 this year and won. Kentucky's had four that they've won over 100, and they had two that they lost over 100, those being 10 Tennessee and Arkansas, so they're used to playing up in those big number games. Meanwhile, in Dayton, Kansas had an eight-point lead. UTEP's come back to tie it. They're in a timeout. 
seven minutes before halftime. It's been a feist. This is a feisty team, this UTEP team. They want to get you in an ugly game. We talked about this being a defensive struggle. Marlon Maxey, one of the key inside guys for UTEP, has three fouls. And Kansas, Philly, very efficient team, hasn't been able to really run that Roy Williams system in the first half. Well, one of the things that hurts if you get in a game like this, if you're Kansas, one of the great tools and weapons that they have is they can go to their bench, and their bench can really explode, but you're playing in an 18-18 game with only 6.50 to go in the first half. That means the bench can't exploit the other team's weakness. By the way, in the West at halftime, Southwestern Louisiana leads New Mexico State 41-38. We'll have more live looks coming up at halftime of our game. Let's send it back for Michigan and East Tennessee State and Greg Gumbel, Quinn Buckner. All right, Jim, thank you. We have 5-11 to play. 43-24 is the Michigan lead right now. And James Bosco almost forgotten about. I mean, he was forgotten about it. He only got help at the last moment. The thing that has been noticeable to me about Michigan, when you talk about somebody being prepared, every loose ball that has gone down so far, Michigan has come up with it. That's a, always a sign to me that the team is prepared to play. Have the, the, the pressure leg, able to make it happen. And Bosco just picked up his second foul of the game. East Tennessee State opened some eyes here two nights ago knocking off Arizona 87 to 80. Alan LaForce says, we're not a household name, but now I think we might be somewhere in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are people that are, you know, taking some interest in it. They've been to the Final Four. The guys they have that are seniors have been all four years. So, you know, they, they've got the experience to be here. But they really just don't have, they have very little size, not only in, in, in terms of just being tall, but they don't have any real girth from shoulder to shoulder. And that has been one of the things that they've used to their advantage, have been not been able to use it with Michigan. But we've been talking about tradition today. They've got it at ETSU. This is their fourth straight 20-win season, 99 and 29, their last four years. This is Jalen Rose. the baseline and he drew the foul they've gotten themselves into a point now that they they are they are just creating opportunities for themselves Jalen Rose has got this kind of uh, he's a cross a little bit of, of Irvin Johnson Irvin Magic Johnson with his ability to pass and and George Gervin the guy who used to play at San Antonio I mean George Gervin was a scoring machine this guy made scoring look like time shoes <laughs> and, and this kid here, what I like about him is as I spent time with him yesterday, he, he really understands how to play. And he understands, you know, this, the, the media, uh, this whole, the, the hype of, of being in the, in the spotlight. And he seems to handle it pretty well. I, I was really impressed with him yesterday. He's going to have to get that gold chain around his neck if he's going to be exactly like George Gervin was. Well, they don't allow that anymore. <laughs> George Gervin was the kind of guy that would, would play and get 38 on you and just say, this is too much job for you. You can't guard me. Dennis. And Greg Dennis playing like the leader he is for ETSU. He now has 10. And we have 4.15 to play here in the first half. Look at this team. And they can have any one of five guys out on the perimeter. And they just kind of take the, they're going to take whatever play they want to get them down on the block. Jackson throws <laughs> <laughs> to Howard. <laughs> Playing the game. 14 for Jawan Howard. There were three people at that time on Rodney English, and he shot that one. And there were three guys standing on the perimeter, wide open. Rose hits the three. Rose is rolling. ETSU's main weapon, the three-point bomb, has not been there. You can see All the those Dennis. Up. Yeah, Dennis just curls one home. But they were hitting those two nights ago with frightening regularity. Well, you, the other thing was they hit it early, too. And when you hit the shot early, you put a lot more pressure on the opposition's offense to try to score points. They haven't had to do that. 
uh, hands of Michigan because Michigan got off to such a good start. This is Jimmy King out front. And they're going to try to swing it and just try to get it anybody they can just to post up because this is what they can get all day long. Jackson hit the side of the backboard and back comes Rodney English. Top of the key. Bingo. That's a better job of moving the basketball. Now they're, they're, that's what they can do. Eric Palmer. But here's, here's what you got. This is what these kids have learned. They are not in any hurry to come back and try to get a basket real quick. This is where we can find out how much they've matured. The lob. Oh! <laughs> oh. A little eye contact. 2.07 to play in the first half. Hey, on CBS. Guys that haven't played together can't make plays like this. This is just a eye contact, and you see right, Juwan Howard throws it at the basket, and watch this. Young Chris Webber has to reach back to slam that one down. He gets it down and lets Greg Dennis knows we can do this quite often at any given moment. You used to do that, didn't you? Yeah, with a trampoline. You know me and a trampoline were good friends. <laughs> I've got no problem with the tramp. Two oh seven remaining here in the first half. Michigan leading it 52 to 34. Michigan has come out and they've gone into a, a, a little bit of a Chris Weber had his one-man zone going on the first play. And Weber commits the foul. Goes over and gives his friend a little high five. So they get, get a little support from his friends over there. That's number two on Weber. I'll tell you how psyched this young man is about this. This guy went to, or they had a meeting and then they left the meeting. He went to see the 89 Michigan Championship game. He asked him to put the tape on. He saw it, and he walked out. He got so psyched, he walked out and said, I don't want to talk to anyone. So he is definitely focused on what they're trying to get accomplished here. And welcome to those of you joining us here at the Omni in Atlanta. 52-34, Michigan with the lead, coming up on a minute 40 to play here in the first half, and it has been all Michigan, and it's inside game so far. And that's a traveling call? They got it, it walking on the, on the sideline, Greg, but what's happened is Michigan got the inside game, they got the outside game, they have been patient. One of the things that uh, Steve Fisher wanted to make sure his group was able to do, they have done that. They have also been very aggressive on the defensive end. Every time there is a potential shot on the part of East Tennessee State, there has been a Michigan player with a hand in their face. And then when there are rebounds, where East Tennessee State can beat you is to the rebound, they have not been able to beat Michigan to the rebound. Calford, that's short. He's falling backwards when he shot it. And a pushing foul is going to go against Marty Story of East Tennessee State. That's number two on Story. And that was another example of a rush shot by the Buccaneers. It really was because it, it, he's actually shooting the shot back a little bit further than he would like to shoot it. When you're struggling the way East Tennessee State is, they've got to get some baskets off this press or some, or somebody's got to get them some layups. But if you're just trying to shoot jump shots, you shoot yourself back in it. That's pretty difficult to do. Howard King. See, they're slow to the basketball, too, but that one is one they, they get right back. Except Howard just out quick, even Calford at 6'4", Howard being 6'10". Jackson to Howard. And Jawan Howard off to a good start, 16 points. Greg, that was a look away one side coming back. <laughs> and down to the last 45 seconds of the half. It's 35 on the shot clock, so they, they don't really have to get the shot off for another 30 seconds or so. Dennis couldn't get it to go down. And see, for Michigan again, they, they come up with the ball. And Steve Fisher wants one shot right here, and that's what Michael Talley is going to do. Coming up at halftime, we will uh, take you around the country for a look at some of the other action happening in NCAA tournament play as we speak. Time is 11 seconds away. Howard. That's 
not where he's bet his best is shooting the jump shot. And that'll cap a pretty good first half for the Wolverines. That is the end of the first half with the score Michigan 54, East Tennessee State 34. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship continues after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the second round of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Mazda Cars and Trucks. Mazda, it just feels right. Chick Tracer, it traces every curve on your face. And by UPS, offering 1030 guaranteed overnight air delivery. California joins us now live. Our campaign 92 commitment continues. The move is on to TV2 Eyewitness News. All right, the tournament split up four ways at the present time. All four regions in action. Halftime, Michigan over East Tennessee State by 20. And welcome back to New York, Jim Nance, along with Billy Packer and uh, Mike Francesa. Blowout in this game, Mike. You know, interestingly, this was the Big Ten blowout that Billy was looking for yesterday. Right, you know, that's the one. We told everybody to go to dinner for the Indiana-LSU game. We said, blowout, this is what you were talking about. Hey, let's let up on that point there. <laughs> guys, you're wearing me out on that. The blowout situations were there. They didn't take place. Hey, guys, uh, before you go walk the dog, let's uh, get everybody to Dayton. A one seed is getting a fight from UTEP. Here's Tim Ryan. 103 on the clock. Kansas and White. UTEP in their orange jerseys. Adonis Jordan lets fly and hits. And it's a four-point lead for the top-seeded Kansas Jayhawks. Under a minute to go as the UTEP Miners hanging in here very well indeed. And the reason why is this youngster right here, Eddie Rivera, controlling the game tempo. UTEP just spreading him out. Don Haskins, the coach of UTEP, knows you've got to slow Kansas down. He wants a game in the 60s, not in the 90s. UTEP's in foul trouble, but the tempo of this game is being controlled by UTEP, not Kansas. That's Howard. What happens Melvin. is when you go to help to the middle, the baseline is open. Great strategy by Don Haskins, and they're down two, hanging tough. 14 seconds left. Jordan takes it to the paint. Comes back out to Richie. Walters. Oh, oh, oh. Won't go for him, and it's Howard doing a good job off the bench. Two on one. Stewart lays it up. Great play by Stewart. What a game this is here. All right, we get there just in time to see Feisty UTEP tie it at the intermission with the one seed, Kansas. Now there's action in Tempe. Southwestern Louisiana has a five-point lead. Here's Brad Nessler. The Aggies of New Mexico State right now in need of a basket, trailing by five, the largest margin for the Raging Cajuns of Southwestern Louisiana this half. Brad Nessler and Ann Myers in Tempe, Arizona with you, and boy, Eric Trailer picked a big time to bury that one. This is the game that seesawed back and forth from the beginning, Ann. It's been an up-tempo game by both teams. They've been running. Good ball movement. Turnovers have also been a key. And so the three-point shots won by Michael Allen. And it'll be a foul on Marcus Stokes. And here's what's gone on so far. Michael Allen, who just missed that shot, is four for five from three-point land. You see the turnover story. And New Mexico State has really made the Raging Cajuns pay for those turnovers with 19 points off the miscues. And with 14 minutes left in the ball game, little Sam Crawford, who's been the star of the West Regional so far at 5'8", brings it up with his chance to try to bring his team back to within a point. Benjamin with a left hand doesn't get it. Ball loose, last touch by Southwestern Louisiana. That's Dee Dee Crawford, Sam's wife. Former cheerleader who's cheering for the old man today. And he's done another nice job. 12-point day so far for Sam Crawford. Crawford was raised by his uncle, Ron Carter, who played with the Lakers. Big inspiration for, for Sam was Norm Nixon. Inside, Reed had it blocked and got it back. Cliff Reed, strong with a right hand. That's goaltended on Macchiato. Cliff Reed has done a good job on the offensive boards for New Mexico State. They've struggled this game. And you've got to give credit to Southwestern Louisiana as far as one of the reasons the Aggies are struggling on the board. 
The crowd here has just loved the action from these two teams from the outset of this one because neither is supposed to be in this game, having upset the ball in Oklahoma respectively to get here. Oh, that's a great play by Chris Hickman. The ball is dribbled right into him. He grabs it away, and they're going to call a foul on him. Marty Fletcher. He's got two months left on his contract, and his wife... Cynthia looking on. She is into the game as much as her husband, if not more so. I think she just let the ref have it there. <laughs> it was a call for their team. <laughs> the Aggies in a zone now. Stokes kicks it back outside. Nice job on defense. Good ball movement by southwestern Louisiana. Allen hasn't hit a two-pointer today. All his field goals have been from three-point range. Hickman, tough on the rebound. Okay, we had a chance to see Marty Fletcher's tie of the tournament, but this uh, really kind of reminds me, guys, of a second-round game a year ago between a couple of Cinderella's, Eastern Michigan and Penn State, that went all the way to overtime. So exciting. You know, I think what happens, too, is when you get two teams that upset people, Billy, playing each other, rather than playing one of the teams that, as we talked about, has a different agenda, such as a Michigan, it really balances things off. You know, Jim uh, is leading to the fact this game is going to go into technical foul, is, go, is going to go into overtime, and what's going to clinch this game? A technical foul on a coach's wife. I mean, is Miss Fletcher into it or is she into it? Are you saying she's out of control? Uh, it looks that way to me, and I've seen that happen. Ref go right up in the stand and say, "This one's on you," you know. Go Cajuns, they say. Okay, that's a one-point game. Meanwhile, in Wooster, Kentucky and Iowa State, 18 minutes left in that one. Kentucky, a six-point lead over Iowa State now. For you folks watching the Michigan game, Michigan's 54 at the half, the second highest halftime total by a team in the tournament this year, only bettered by Kentucky's 57 in the first half against Iowa State. The pace was all Kentucky's. They were eight, they are right now 8 of 14 from 3. Mashburn's doing a good job, but Iowa State, Billy, 15 for 21 from the floor in the first half. Johnny Orr goes in there, looks at the stat sheet, and says, what are we doing down 8 here? Look at the way we're shooting a basketball. Hey, Mike, and talking about three-point shooting, Kentucky was 7 for 27 in their game against ODU, and, and that's where you Live and die with that three. Today they're on schedule, but I say Iowa State staying right there with them. All right, later today, the third part of our triple header. Many will see Louisville against UCLA. Others will watch Syracuse against Massachusetts. We'll stay later on where the action is hot. Four games right now at once. Let's get you back out on the road to the Final Four here on CBS. We didn't design the new Mazda MX-3 to be like apple pie. Jalapenos were what we had in mind. Because if something's not worth having an opinion about, it, it's not worth having. And with the only V6 in its class, the MX-3 is one hot chili pepper. Hey, you're not John Doe. Why drive this car? The new MX-3 from the new Mazda. It does feel the RCA projection screen is so big, you'll feel like part of a show when you watch the RCA home theater. It also has Dolby surround sound that's so real, Stand back, everyone. you'll forget you're sitting at home. Let me handle this. The RCA home theater also has picks in picks. It lets you watch two things at once, in color. Another way RCA is changing entertainment again. Education is the underlying basis for whatever success we have. Athletics may have opened some doors which might not otherwise have been opened, but it's the education which allows us to choose between which doors to walk in. No matter what we accomplish in life, no matter what we have accomplished in life, it is education which makes the difference. The message is going out that education is important. Athletes are role models. And as role models, we have the unique opportunity to send that message. It is our opportunity to influence the future. And children are the future. The education of today's student athletes is crucial because they are tomorrow's leaders. They are tomorrow's role models. When student athletes perform and achieve in the classroom, everybody wins. And one of the lessons that I've learned over the years is that you can never have too many winners. 
7.30, Monday on TV2. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the second round of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Chevrolet, the cars and trucks more people depend on. Delta Airlines, we love to fly, and it shows. And by Budweiser, the king of beers, with that clean, crisp, cold taste, nothing beats a Bud. Halftime at the Omni in Atlanta. Michigan, 54. East Tennessee State, 34. Welcome back to Atlanta, everyone. Greg Gumbel along with Quinn Buckner. Curry Kirkpatrick is here, too. Pretty good offensive display by the Michigan Wolverines in the first half, Quinn, and a couple of guys in particular. Greg, they did almost anything they needed to do. As, as a matter of fact, Juwan Howard was a guy that I thought played very well. What he was able to do is establish position inside, and then he just took whatever he got. Now, if you watch, watch Story's hands. He barely gets him up to the elbows of Jawan Howard. Too much of a height advantage, just nothing that they can do with it. But there's been some communication amongst these guys. They know each other very well. Right here, Jalen Rose just throws the ball, throws the ball right at the basket, and you can see Jimmy King come to finish it off. They know each other well. They are first-year players. They have gained a lot of experience, and I tell you where it shows up the most. They have not turned the basketball over quite as much as you'd like them to do. Let's check in with Curry Kirkpatrick. Curry? Greg, East Tennessee was obviously stunned by Michigan in the first half. Coach Allen LaForce told these guys, I don't know why you're intimidated. You're scared. You're, you're, you don't know what you're doing. He says, we got to chip away at the lead. That's the only way we're going to get back in it. The only freshmen the Michigan guys are playing like now are NBA freshmen. Back to you guys. Allen LaForce is going to be looking for that three-pointer to light things up because that's East Tennessee State's style. Well, what, what Allen LaForce is, is saying is basically, you see this lob. I mean, they, oh, eye contact again <laughs> at any moment. But what he's saying is you, you're giving them too much respect. You know, you come out, you're playing against the reputation, and the reputation can't beat you. What'll beat you is if you get out there and don't play basketball. Greg Dennis comes back to score. 21 for Chris Howard, 16 for Jalen Rose. And Dennis with 15 for ETSU. Howard's shot doesn't go. Dennis with the rebound. Dennis again. What's significant about that is Calvin Talford normally would they would get that shot. And with Michigan, they are so quick getting back that he had to pass it. That's a four-on-one break that little Jason Niblett just thwarted. Well, it's good that he did thwart it, but you look at Michigan when that first half stat, 64%. They have not been able to keep Michigan from getting the ball where they would like. You know the size would take up, take in effect. 20 rebounds to 10. That's why Michigan has gotten themselves with this 20-point lead. The other, now they're starting to get a little impatient break. These, these are quick shots that they're taking without moving up the defense. Rodney English alone for the three. He got it. And Rodney English trying to put a little spark into the Buccaneers. 56-39. Rose, Weber, King, Jawan Howard, and Ray Jackson starting the second half for Michigan. The other thing East Tennessee State's going to have, they've got to come out and start picking up a little bit earlier. They can't just let Michigan walk the ball down and get in position to start their offense. give and go with Ray Jackson. If you step to the ball, that does not happen. Greg Dennis, the senior, should know better. English doubled, gets it back outside. That's the kind of penetration they need. Story hits the three. If, you, if you're able to penetrate, you can get some things happening for you pretty positively. And because Nibley was able to penetrate, he got Story open. Trezell Silvers comes on for Greg Dennis, and Eric Riley in for Juwan Howard. Silvers isn't in the game, so they want Silvers up to be able to guard people right now. They don't want to be able to let them just walk the ball down court. As you see, Talford is up on Jalen Rose. English went for the oh. steal. Oh, what a nice pass Weber made for Ray Jackson. The recognition and the execution is great by these guys. Take another look. I mean, right here, if you go for the steal, you miss it. Weber can make a lot of things happen. He saw right here 
coming to the basket. Ray Jackson didn't get the dunk, but he gets two foul shots. Marty Story commits his third of the day. Greg, you got to marvel at these guys. You think that they, those are the kind of plays you think they would think about executing and not execute. And they do it flawlessly, getting people the ball where they need to have it. Very unselfish group to have as many superstars, all Americans on these teams. These guys, and Steve Fish has had a lot to do with the growth of these young men, have given of themselves for the better of the team. Missed them both. Weber got the rebound. Oh, he's going to take him. There's no way. Just missed the shot. Niblet for three. <laughs> Here they go. <laughs> ETSU has found the touch. 58-45. Third three-pointer of the half. That will not count. And the foul is on Trezell Silver. This is Southeast Region play. Here in Atlanta, yesterday, Ohio State and North Carolina advanced to the Sweet 16 in Lexington next week. East Tennessee State and Michigan vying for the right to move on along with Oklahoma State, which won earlier today. Riley shot rejected from behind by Calvin Telford. Well, you can see at least they're playing with a lot more enthusiasm. They've got to play with emotion. That's one of the things that set them apart when they played in the Arizona game. They played with emotion. I, I talked about them getting the loose ball. The, the emotion can help you do that. Get you to anticipate. And East Tennessee State looking a lot more aggressive on defense now. Well, oh, look out. Chris Weber, oh, if he hurt his arm on this, it's no wonder. He tried to break the basket. Watch this. Threw it down on both of them. Now you got these young fellas. Do they play over the rim of what? <laughs> I mean, that ball went in so fast. 60 to 45. He's not a good foul shooter, so that, that's been one of the things he had, but he may have hurt his shoulder a little bit. He threw that one so hard, he had to hold on to the rim, and I've seen him twice kind of grab it, but he, in order to protect himself because he, he threw it down on two East Tennessee State players. Let's see how ETSU reacts. Dennis for three. Crazy three for two. Dennis has 18. And Jalen Rose answers off the baseline. Just as it was against the game the other night. Jalen Rose always seems to find to get the basket that Michigan needs to get. Along the baseline, English was fouled as he made his move. Much more inspired team that's out on the court here. Great. Much more. That foul is on Ray Jackson, number 21, and that's number two. And we'll take time with 15.53 to play. 62-48, Wolverine. It's been said that American workers are lazy. We want high pay without working. And give too little attention to quality. The fact is, U.S. workers are the most productive in the world. And then some. It looked like a slice to me. For all the hard work and achievements of the American worker, thanks from Budweiser. With service to more cities across the Atlantic than any other U.S. airline, Delta now makes it easier than ever for the people of America to get to know the people of Europe. Buongiorno. Bonjour. See ya. Good dark. Richie. Delta. We love to fly in the shoes. Здравствуйте. 
It's not easy being a truck. I go around. I was strong as I could be. I go around. Nothing ever got to me. But through it all, Chevy Full Size has the best resale value in the business. Chevy trucks. The trucks you can depend on. The trucks that last. Now it's easy to own a Chevy truck. My father grew up in the Depression. I grew up in the 60s. He fought a war and, and I didn't. All we ever saw in each other were... What were the differences? I think we fought because we believed there'd always be time to take things back. Make things right. I think now's the time for me to do that. Skiing superstars Bill Johnson, Phil Mayer, Franz Plummer, and more compete at the American Ski Classic next Sunday on CBS. One of the things you've got to have is some power if you want to play inside. And there's no question about the power of Chris Webber. You see, he looked at Greg Dennis coming, threw the ball down in his face, and kind of let him know, you got to back off me just a little bit, my friend. And, and I'm telling you, Greg, call it incoming. Incoming, you bet. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that one goes through in a hurry. 15-53 to play in the game, 62-48. Rose went for the steal and didn't quite get it. Now, Nivlis got to know you can't make a pass like that. That's a pass across the court with the kind of speed that's on the floor. That one won't ever get that. Nivlis, Silvers, English, Dennis, and Calford on the floor for the Buccaneers. Silver. Bucks have cut a 20-point lead to 12. But well, they've got to be able to play some defense because the one thing Michigan was able to do, as you see a miscommunication between Ray Jackson and Jalen Rose, is the ball go out of bounds. The one thing they haven't been able to do is stop Michigan from getting the shots they want to get. Dennis. They got Chris Weber down. King to Rose. And Rose got it to a teammate. And a traveling violation on Jackson. Those are the ones that I was talking about. Remember the loose balls? You've got to make people play for those, and you need to be able to come up with them. Some women's scores. NCAA Women's Basketball Championship. Michigan's lead is 12. That's partially blocked. And Rose has the loose ball. See, the, the Michigan is still able to close out when they have to. And that's what they did on that play. And that was Chris Weber. Someone guilty of a hold in the middle. They call three, no, seconds, three seconds on seconds Chris Weber. That's on three Weber. turnovers in a row. That's got to be a concern if I'm Steve Fisher to try to figure out what are my guys doing here. All of a sudden, they will have laps. The one thing that they thought they had learned in that last Ohio State game where they had the lead and blew it late was that they didn't play 40 minutes, and they, they used that as a, a point of emphasis, and they reverted back to what they did previously, and that's not staying tough for the entire 40 minutes. Story, three-pointer. Rocket and rolling. 62-53. Eleven fifty-four of the first half was the last time the lead was under 10. And timeout, Michigan. There are two kinds of cars. The cars you love to drive and the cars you need to drive. The cars that really handle and the cars that handle the groceries. The cars you don't want to stop driving and the cars that make the stops you need. With standard anti-lock brakes and a 200 horsepower V6, Chevy Lumina Euro 3.4 is two kinds of car for one kind of driver. You. The cars more people depend on. And now it's easy to win with a heartbeat. Want to run your windowing software fast? Then you need a real power source inside. 
a source that can generate the power your software needs. The affordable Intel 486. Power it up and run your software at light speed. Intel, the computer inside. Yo, Sinbad here with the black top shoe. I got my boys here from the International Committee. I got Schwinn and Schwinn. I'm trying to get the outside game acquired to the summer game champ Barcelona, all right? Tell me you don't love this game. Look at this game. Come on, give my man a monster slam. Oh, Bam, you're in the You got it. Let me see my black top shoe. I mean, you can't beat this shoe. This is made for the outdoor game. How do you pick the team, bro? How do you pick your teams? You call games. I got games. No, no. I got games. I got games. No, I got games. No, you will never get a game. So, we definitely going to Barcelona this summer? Is that too much to ask for? Am I asking too much here? Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going. Right now at Pizza Hut, get a Supreme Pizza loaded with six delicious toppings like mouth-watering pepperoni and green peppers. Call Pizza Hut Delivery and get a medium Supreme for $7.99 and any other medium for just four bucks more. Call now. Come on, Pizza Hut, Pizza Have you ever dreamed you could fly? Now the world's greatest illusionist conquers the mystery of human flight without strings or camera tricks. An all-new Magic of David Copperfield, Tuesday, March 31st. The thing that you have to do against East Tennessee State is you've got to close out on them. They have so many good shooters. You see coming out late is Chris Weber. Much too late at the three-point line, and Marty Story finishes it up. You've got to close out so they don't get a clean look at the basket. You see the kind of results they can have. 14-15 to play. You see the run that East Tennessee State has been on, but there's the lob to Jimmy King. Well, that's what a timeout does. That's what you want coming out of a timeout, to get an easy basket. And Jalen Rose's man had fallen down, but he was patient enough to wait so he could get that lob, knowing that he was going to get a good look at the basket. Number 10, Reese Dudley, into the game for the first time. Another three-pointer on the way from ETSU. Doesn't work. That's a good timeout by Steve Fisher because it'll make the guys be much more patient. But that shot was not a good one by Chris Weber. Well, that was a foul for one thing. But right here, Jalen Rose's man had fallen down, and he didn't even look at the basket. And you just see coming in the back is Jimmy King to finish it off. That was definitely designed in the timeout. Jalen Rose followed, following Coach Fisher's rules and guidance in the timeout. Story, Dennis, English, Niblett, and Calvin Calford. I'll tell you who you've got to get credit to is Jimmy King because he is not allowing Niblett with a five-inch, seven-inch uh, height disadvantage to beat him. And if he doesn't beat if Niblett doesn't beat him, there's no way to free people up for shots. Niblett. Well, he got that off the screen, and Jerron Howard didn't step out to help him, but Jimmy King had been controlling him. 56 as ETSU is now down eight. Weber for three. Well, if you, if you can't get it inside, he can step outside and be the pants. Chris Weber has 26 points this afternoon. As we come up on 12 and a half to play for the game. Calford, short. Niblet <laughs> feeling the game because he had a man wide open. You got Jimmy King ahead. <laughs> That's how they make you pay if they get the long rebound off the three-point shot. The quickness normally of East Tennessee, East Tennessee State can gather that. They didn't allow Michigan to get that basket. Rodney English looking to get involved and gets it home. That's a quick move to the hoop pass, Chris Weber. 69, 58, Michigan's lead 11. Quick turnaround by King. So quietly, Jimmy King has had a very good game here. He's, I'm telling you, he's played defense. He's gotten some dunks, uh, gotten some rebounds. They got him spread out, not great. Nibbler, short on the three-pointer. Boward with the rebound, and King ahead of the pack again. And 
a little show time at the end of it. Niblett takes the three-pointer in the corner. The toughest shot to take for a point guard is in the corner because he has fast big responsibilities. Niblett didn't get back. Jimmy King has scored the last two baskets. Michigan is rolling again. And Alan LaForce talking to him about it, too. The women's final four in two weeks on CBS. so special it may last as long as you own your car the new xh4 congratulations it's only schulen backed by an 80,000 mile treadwear limited warranty schulen because so much is riding on your tires they came from different cultures from different worlds to create Expo 92. To help them work together, Xerox designed the largest local area network in Europe, linking thousands of people to share ideas and create the documents that let people discover the best in each other. Putting it together. Networking, scanning, printing. Xerox, the document company. You did use crazy glue, right? Right. Let me down. And it fixed everything here, right? Right. Oh. It didn't fix your broken promise, did it? Well, I said I was sorry. Let me down. No! I've just fixed that. Oh! Sorry. <laughs> did I mention only Crazy Glue has this Stay Fresh Crazy case? Yes! And if I ever get down... Hardly worry about that. Oh. I wonder if that last chap got down. Crazy Glue. For things that are broken. Except promises. Maybe your first car shouldn't be a car. I was 18. Didn't have a care. Working for peanuts, not a dime to spare. Get this Chevy S10 EL pickup with cash back for around $8,000. Chevrolet, the trucks you can depend on, the trucks that last. You are watching the NCAA Basketball Championship on CBS. Well, you know that these guys can rebound. They've got Howard who rebounds, Weber that can rebound. But they've got guys who can get out on the break. They've got Jimmy King who can finish with a splash. <laughs> Boy, they got it all. And Jalen Rolls knows that's a big basket because they, they were starting to lose a little bit of momentum. But, Greg, you make a great point. The three-point basket by Chris Weber was the thing that really seemed to silence the momentum. I thought that it started to go in favor of East Tennessee State. Story shooting the three doesn't fall, and here comes Jimmy King. Polinka back in the lineup for Michigan. Howard's turnaround doesn't go. English has it, and here comes Eric Palmer. Palmer for three. And Talford, uh -oh. five, and uh -oh. here comes Weber. <laughs> Working on his stuff. Working on his stuff. Oh, my. Yes, indeed. Uh-oh. <laughs> do they handle the basketball? Oh, do they? Man, they're just having fun, too. Under ten and a half to play for the game. 75-58. And just like that, Michigan has it back up to a 17-point lead. But where they, they've got to be careful, Greg, you notice this as well. Michigan cannot afford, that's, that's three foul shots. You cannot afford to get yourself in the position where you start having laws in the action. You see Weber throwing himself on the pass, throwing the pass there. Now, what makes that great play is when you got a guy 6'9 coming down, making the initial play, then he can kick it to a guard who you know will make a good pass and a good decision as they did right there. Second personal foul on Rob Polenka. There is Jeff Lebo, assistant coach at East Tennessee State University. He knows a little about playing against Michigan. For North Carolina, he helped defeat Michigan in 1987 and 88 in the tournament and then lost to that Michigan team in 89 that went on to win it all. And couldn't he stroke it from the outside? Well, I was talking to him uh, after the game the other day, and, and what Jeff said, boy, would I have loved to have been on this team the way they let you shoot threes here. <laughs> yeah, he could stroke it. Eric Palmer at the line. 
Palmer, only a 57% free throw shooter. A guy that size, he's, that's the one area that he has to improve upon because he's going to get fouled when he's so small, but he's that, three for three today. Yeah, well, that doesn't help it up a little bit. You're the guy that, that does that math so quickly. <laughs> but he's so small, and it, usually if he gets bumped, he'll get some fouls. So he's got to get that percentage up. 75-61, Michigan. Everybody comes out on the court and handle the basketball. Jimmy King is feeling it, but there's no way he should take that shot. No reset because the ball never touched the rim. Howard in the lane, stripped by Dennis. Howard again. Oh. And Weber <laughs> simply pushed his defender away. Shot clock is down to seven. Rose into the lane, got it. Seventy-seven, sixty-one. Michigan. Trezell Silver. And Weber got a hand on that. Silver got it back. Weber tried to take a little bit of a charge and, and went down, and Silvers was able to get it back. You know, I was talking about people doing jobs. Jiggle and Rose has done a good job on Calvin Calford because he played big. The other night, he has not had a, been a factor at all in this game. Weber to Howard. What? Too high off the glass. And that is called a jump ball. And Boy, you're really going to have to explain to me how you can get a jump ball with Calvin Stelford has his arms wrapped around the guy. The, the official felt there was more ball there in, in grass than there was arms. Wow. <laughs> how do you like that explanation? <laughs> Louisville and UCLA still to come. Here on CBS, Syracuse and Massachusetts. As we work our way towards the final 16 in this tournament. 8.45 to play in the game. Michigan by 14. Greg, I've been impressed with a lot of things that Michigan has been doing. What I'm really impressed with is their, their defense. Dennis, and as inside. I, as I say that, they let a man drive right through the paint. <laughs> and the rebound by Pelfrey is good. But their perimeter defense has been excellent. They, as a rule, they have closed out well, been able to recover, keep themselves out of significant trouble. And Pelfrey just commits a useless foul. That's number one on Pelfrey. And into the lineup now for the Buccaneers, Rodney English and Calvin Telford. That's their offensive lineup. They want to get in there. One of the things that, that may come to Michigan is they don't you know, work at it to keep the score. But they're not a good foul shooting team. They've got a comfortable lead now, so they don't have to worry about it. they got Jalen Rose shooting straightaway jump shots, so as long as they can do that, they don't have to worry about a lot of other things. Rose hits a three, and he has 12. They call an offensive foul called backing in on Calvin Talford. Trying to get position. Jalen Rose setting it up. Chris Weber within one point of his career high. He has 26 points and three rebounds. Eastern East Tennessee State has come out shooting the three-pointer a little better this half, but Michigan still shoots 62% from the floor. Michigan just controls it, Greg. They, they've controlled it from the beginning, getting it inside. East Tennessee State came out with us on track in the second half. They dug too big of a hole, and Michigan's confident was such that they knew they could get it inside and get something every time. And Pelfrey picks up his second foul, and Riley will shoot two. Jerry Pelfrey, a 6'6 junior from Paintsville, Kentucky. There's Chris Weber. There are more than a few people who think this Michigan team has everything you need to go all the way. They've got they've got a lot of it, I'll tell you that. What they they have one thing that, that is, is the real question mark, and you really should have a lot of it, but we'll see with them. That's experience. Now, part of the experience that they have or the lack of experience is they don't know what to expect, and they're not going to be afraid to try to make some things happen just because 
that's their nature. When you're not afraid, then a lot of good things can happen to you. These guys decided to go to school together, the five freshmen, particularly Jalen Rose and Chris Weber, because they wanted to go get a championship. Chris Weber and Jalen Rose have, have known, them, known each other since they played, you know, in sixth and seventh grade. And they talked about going to school together. The other guys were already headed that way. And so they've gotten themselves a team. They believe that they can win it, but you do need experience, I believe. Rodney English for three. And the threes have stopped falling now for East Tennessee State. Back come the Bucks. Palmer into the lane. No fear whatsoever. Eric Palmer. And he has ten. 83, 67, we're under six and a half to play. Howard with the hook. They called Pelfrey for that one. Who they call? They call it on Eric Riley. Looks like the foul is on Eric Riley. Well, Pelfrey was doing a good job of blocking him out. Talking about advancing on to the final round of 16. Florida State and Indiana have done that. UCLA will play Louisville and New Mexico State playing Southwest Louisiana. For, for those people that don't follow basketball, I think Florida State has proved that their game and what's happened to them this season is no fluke. That's a very good basketball team that Pat Kennedy has down there. Team to play in the game. East Tennessee State has missed its last six three-point shots. They are 10 of 23 for the game. Look how the ball is staying on the perimeter. Niblet, make it the last seven. On the baseline, Rodney English. But my point was, it's staying on the perimeter and you're shooting jump shots all the time. They haven't made them, so they don't get a chance to penetrate at all. Jimmy King, top of the key. And the foul on Riley behind Pelfrey. And I guarantee you Steve Fisher didn't like the shot. And he's trying to get Jimmy King's attention. Just to try to get him to calm down, just to let him know. And he will call him over and speak personally with him. Yeah, because the other part of what you're doing here is you're helping these young men grow as people and players. So what you're trying to do is just let him know and in your own way, look, Jimmy, I support what you're trying to get accomplished, but that's not the way we do it here at Michigan. Move the basketball around. There'll be a time for that shot. Marty Story, almost impossible shot, and an offensive foul. They get a foul on uh, Rodney English, and that's number two, and we'll take a walk to the other end of the floor. Quinn, in the first game, we saw Oklahoma State go up against Tulane, and Tulane, after an emotional win over St. John's on Friday, came out flat. I think a little bit of that has affected East Tennessee State as well after a, after a very big win over Arizona on Friday. I think theirs is probably more tired, if you think about anything else, because they, they, I thought, had to work a lot harder to get their victory. I'm not saying one didn't, you know, didn't work hard. I'm just thinking these guys had to work so much harder against the team. So, yeah, I think it has something to do with it, Greg. I just think that East Tennessee just couldn't get back. See, they have the experience of having guys been here, so they should have known what it was going to take. What they didn't know is what they were playing against in Michigan. Because if you get caught up in the hype of thinking that you're playing against five freshmen, what you fail to look at is the talent that these young men have. Rodney English has committed his third personal. But I guarantee you, if the game continues as it has, Oklahoma State will not take them lightly at all. Chris Weber has now tied his career high with 27 points. I'll go on the limb. He'll break that again. <laughs> you know me, I'm one of those guys that go way out on the limb. Take a chance. I take a chance. I'm one of those kind of guys. Baseline, English got it. And Jalen Rose back in a hurry. Five ten to play in the game. 
Rose for three. Weber tried to get it to Riley. Out of bounds. And belongs to ETSU. Those are two of the kind of players that can let you back in the game. And, and, and that's what Steve Fisher's telling him. Run some clock. There's no need for a three-pointer. That shot could have been taken. The one that, uh, that Weber has is one that he can make anytime instead of trying to jam the ball down somebody's throat. And now the Bucks are just standing around as the shot goes up. That's a sign of tired legs. And that is, too. There's a lunge and no chance to get it. Rejected by English. Three on two. Talford. Nice move, but the shot didn't go down. Because he couldn't finish it. Too tired to finish it. And out of bounds to Michigan. And back into the lineup comes Juwan Howard. Memphis State. Tough victory over a tough team yesterday. Arkansas, Georgia Tech at the buzzer over Southern Cal. Cincinnati eliminated Michigan State today, and Kansas in a battle with UTEP. The winner of that game will join the other three in Kansas City next week. And there's a foul by Marty Story. And I believe that's four on Story, it is. And there's no chance to get that. And, and uh, Alan LaForce just kind of, you know, put his head down and walked in the other direction. I, I don't know what kind of play you're trying to make, but you can't get it done doing that. We mentioned this the other night. It's worth mentioning again. When Steve Fisher took over in Michigan in 1989, that was the year Michigan finished third in the Big Ten, played here in Atlanta in the Southeast Regional, and moved on to Lexington. Michigan again finished third this year. Of course, they're here in the Omni in Atlanta, and if they win here, they'll go on to Lexington. And both in 1989 and here, the home stadium. So you're saying you're being a little prescient about what, what is yet to come. Is that what you're doing? A little what? Don't try it again. <laughs> a little prescient. I don't understand what I'm saying. You, you know what's going to happen. Don't shy away. You heard me. Actually, I'm rethinking what I said. <laughs> most of these, most of these final fours are played in dome stadiums. They're both of them. Most of them are indoors. <laughs> the foul goes against Michigan, and it is on Jimmy King. Kansas in a battle with. UTEP, in fact, UTEP with a two-point lead. Well, in the second half, that's Don Haskins, and that's the kind of tempo that he likes to play. He's a defensive-oriented coach. He keeping the score down is clearly in, is not in Kansas' favor. We get a chance to find out if they can play both sides, both tempos. They're a very good team, but this is a good challenge for them. Brazil Silver's out. Calvin Talbert back into the lineup. Talbert, English, Niblet. Dennis and Marty Story on the floor now for East Tennessee State. And Weber with a rebound. 85-72, 4-10 to play in the game. Oh, he, he's got it all inside. I mean, almost Chris Weber almost had five seconds. He had his man so much in such a bad position. And Howard calls the timeout before he's tied up outside by Rodney English. 3.55 to play. Three fifty-five to play, 85-72. That's Freddie Hunter on the Michigan bench, Clint. Greg, Freddie Hunter is an interesting story to me, and I think most people will appreciate this. This is a young man who, as a senior, has really helped galvanize the team. But what has happened is, last year he had academic trouble. The reason he had them was because he was working part-time, and he couldn't take enough hours to keep himself eligible. They have made him captain of the team, and he's come back, and he has talked about how the, the young men have come along, and he's been a big part of what Michigan has to do, but you've got to admire a kid who's worked his way into position, worked his way in school, and then worked his way in a position to be of some help to the team. That foul will fall out front and negates that basket, and Steve Fisher doesn't like it at all. That's number three on Chris Weber. That's the same play they were in coming out of the other last time out when they needed the basket. Freddie Hunter originally recruited by Steve Fisher from the intramural league. 
at Ann Arbor. Yes, I mean, he played intramural, little intramural everything. Football, basketball, just anything he could play. His team was called Freddie and the Seven Dwarfs. And they needed some help, and they asked him to come out and help when they didn't have the young players, and he came out and helped, and has really been very supportive for him. Greg Dennis on the offensive boards there. Inside, Jalen Rose got the bucket and drew the foul from Calvert. Yeah, but he sees he's throwing the pass. I mean, and the pass was right where he needed to get it, right now. That's number four on Calvert. Jalen Rose, another outstanding afternoon. And when you talk to him about the club, I, I asked him, I said, when did you guys know you could play big-time basketball? Greg, they knew it the Duke game. They knew once they made that run back at Duke that they could play big-time. So they've got two games that they point to early in their career. The first one is Duke to know that they could play big-time college basketball. The second one was Ohio State, the last game they played Ohio State, which was like four games toward the end of the season, which told them, you got to play 40 minutes of basketball in order to be a championship caliber team. Let's check in with Curry Kirkpatrick. Curry? Angie Fisher, wife of Steve Fisher. This uh, road to the national championship is looking a little familiar, isn't it? Very familiar, yes, Curry, it is. Atlanta here, Atlanta here this week. Lexington hopefully next week. And it's all the same as it was in 89. Yes, all the same, only this time we've got a job for sure. <laughs> Listen, is it different? It's a different. This is Steve's team, heart and soul. The last time he took over an, a, another coach's team, is that a different feeling? No, not really. I mean, we felt like that was our team then too, and uh, it's just, you know, it's, it's a different feeling because it's a different team, but it's, you know, still a great, great experience. Thanks a lot. Good luck to you. Thank you. Back to you, Jay. All right, Curry. Steve and Angie have a 12-year-old son named Mark as Greg Dennis is fouled going to the basket. They have a 12-year-old son, Mark, who was out here shooting around between practice sessions the other day. And this little lefty can shoot the basketball, Quinn. Reminded me of you. <laughs> I'm not left-handed. <laughs> you shoot like you're left-handed. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> He may be signing off a little early today. There is Angie going back to her seat and getting a round of applause. <laughs> Just under three minutes left. 89-74 and Greg Dennis. Rounding out his career here this afternoon. And it's been a, a story for uh, uh, Alan LaForce in his own right. Here's a guy who near the end of uh, uh, two years ago, actually last year, hurt himself. Got a red shirt became a red shirts kind of kid, but he has really been supportive of the team. When the team plays well, it's usually with Greg Dennis plays well, and, and Alan LaForce feels he owes a lot of the success of this team to Greg Dennis. He's the guy that come back and had made the commitment. And remember, when he got hurt, he had never been hurt before, so that was a problem, so much so that he almost dropped out of school. And they talked him into staying in school. He got his grades and everything back together, and has come back and has played, and has had a great career. I mean, they, they don't... They're struggling to try to get themselves back in this game, but he has had a great career. And Calvin Talford has just seen his career come to an end. He has fouled out of this game. And the 6'4 senior from Castlewood, Virginia, leads with just three points, and there is a large part of the story for ETSU today. Without a doubt, Calvin Talford, nothing to hang his head about. He had a tough day today. He played against a team that, that made it difficult on him. And he just, he averages normally about 16 and a half, 17 points a game, and today only three points. And that's part of the reason that uh, East Tennessee State could not get going offensively. He's a young man, Quinn, that you feel uh, could play more basketball. Well, I think he's going to get a chance to play. He may be a, a late pick some, or something like that. Uh, but he, he's very, very athletic. If he, if he shoots the ball the way he shot it here, not today, he can do some things. And he can guard some people. So he's got a good chance. Because one of the things, he, to go to the next level, you've got to be able to do if you can't score, is guard people. He can guard people. And a tremendous leaper. Yes. He's, he, again, he's got some rise, some hops. Getting you familiar with the turn. Thank you. 
90 to 76. And 245 to play. Dennis along the baseline. And a blocking foul goes against Juan Howard. That's three on Howard. And it's still plugging at it. I mean, you got 2.38 to go, even though it appears to be a long shot. Oh, see, Kansas is, is down six here trying to get with UTEP. And 3.07 to play. There's Calvin Talford. Number three all-time scorer at East Tennessee State University. And number one is standing at the line. proud to point to the fact that on TV this year they were 12 and 1. Their only loss on television an overtime loss to Oral Roberts. And that'll do it for Greg Dennis. Dennis comes off the floor. Trezell Silvers in for him. I'm not sure that's going to end this for, for, for the big guy. He yeah. may be back. I think he may be back. What they're trying to do is get a quick team on the floor. And Pelfrey crashes into Weber. There's Greg Dennis. Big day today. Didn't have that big a day in the win over Arizona. He had eight points, but came up big today. He had a different kind of big game. He, he was he was enough of a threat that when the guy, whoever Rooks or whomever came out to guard him, he could go around and create. But today he scored better. He hadn't been able to get any, any help from his teammates on a consistent basis, but he's the, the senior is the guy you would expect to step up. He stepped up and done everything that he can possibly do. And didn't spend much time on the bench, did he? No. <laughs> I didn't think he was through. This is the guy at, at, at the foul line. Chris Weber is a guy that grew tall early. And when he grew tall, one of the guys that used to tease him about not being able to play, because he couldn't play early, was Jalen Rowe. <laughs> so he grew up trying to improve his game so he could be able to play and guys would not talk about him and all he really wants to be is just one of the guys now i don't know how you can be 6'9 and 240 and be just one of the guys to be one of the big guys here comes jalen rose rose has 18. dennis way short Rose is passed for King, out of bounds, and will come back. Take a look at Jalen Rose coming right at you again. Well, he was going to take it and kind of go with one hand, he just, and then he gets a finish right there. And you know his teammates have got to go, and Michael Talley waiting for him, and you see right there. <laughs> Minute celebration by Chris Webber. Rodney English is on the line, and uh, the wheels are coming off now for East Tennessee State. 2.02 to play. This is not a guy, if they're thinking about fouling, you don't want to even consider fouling Jalen Rose. He's the best foul shooter they got. And they just did. Will think if you're going to try to do that, you can't let him get the basketball. You need to force it into Howard or, or somebody else's hand so you can foul the guy with the ball. Otherwise, you got the intentional. Kentucky on their way. And Jalen Rose now with 19 points, 10 assists, 3 rebounds. Jalen is one of those guys who enjoys distributing and just distributing the basketball as much as he likes shooting. Well, and he's very capable of doing that, Greg, and, and he gets his game. His father was the great Jimmy Walker. He used to play at Providence, and his father could score. I'm telling you, could flat out fill it up, and Jalen has shown that he can do that as well. And that's why we he gets this good understanding. Tally to Rose. And the save by Dudley. 
Dennis for three and got that. Greg Dennis with 27 on the day. They, they, they won't get it over. And they didn't get it over. Dudley lobs, and the tap for English didn't go. So we're looking at a Michigan-Oklahoma State matchup, and that's an offensive foul. Well, they're, they're, Michigan's trying to figure out a way to let the East Tennessee State back in the game because this is you know, still a, a shot at it. Ohio State, North Carolina, Oklahoma State, and Michigan soon to join those three teams in Lexington next week. Oklahoma State, Michigan, an intriguing matchup. It is an intriguing matchup because what you're going to see, again, you'll find out just how much these guys have learned at Michigan. But uh, the thing I like about Oklahoma State, they go at you either way you want to play. You want to get it up and down. They'll figure out how to do that. I think Michigan can do that, and they may have the people that can, can handle Brian Houston. And that's what that's the first place you've got to be out there and, and be able to play is handle Byron Houston. And, and the other person I think is really critical for uh, the control is Sean Sutton, because Sean really controls the tempo of the team. He knows how to direct people. Uh, today, Corey Williams had a good game, so it, it was, it'll was it be an interesting matchup. Jawan Howard probably will have a, a much more, and I probably, will have a more difficult time, I think, just shooting over the top when you're playing against uh, Brian Reeves, the seven-footer. He won't be as agile, so that means Howard needs to try to go around him. Greg Dennis now with 29 points and six rebounds today. And Kentucky has beaten Iowa State. So uh, one of the Pelfries moves on to the Sweet 16. <laughs> ETSU will head back to uh, what should be a warm reception in Statesboro. They're not going to Statesboro. I don't think so. No. <laughs> your head down. East Tennessee State has had a good year. They thought one of the things I know they wanted to do was to get beyond the first game, and they played some people well, but they, they played a team that's just excellent. Dennis trying for the slam was followed by Chris Weber, who says, who, me? You know what? Greg, he's so strong, he didn't know, I don't think he knew he did. <laughs> he took Dennis and just moved him right out of the way and didn't know he had done it. East Region, Duke, Seton Hall, Kentucky. Joining them will be the winner of the Syracuse-Massachusetts game in Philadelphia. That action begins Thursday night. And with 37 and a half seconds left, top seed Kansas. That's all that's left between the Jayhawks and elimination. Tough part about Kansas being down to a team like UTEP. They don't beat themselves. Neither does Kansas, but UTEP is a very good defensive team. King, Weber, Hayes Powell. That's a good foul to get him on the uh, get him on the line. Fourth Michigan to make some shots. Third personal in our Chevrolet players of the game, Greg Dennis of ETSU and Chris Weber of Michigan. Boy, what a couple of performers they've been today. They they both performed well, and you know that's two different sides of the spectrum too. You've got the senior Greg Dennis. And the young freshman, well, I shouldn't say young, and the freshman first-year player, Chris Weber. And you just can see that good things are very much in store for Chris Weber and his teammates as long as they stay together and play like a unit. They've got some good things in store. 30 points for Weber. Dennis, and blocked by Weber, he'll put up another three. Fell free to Weber, to English. 
and a timeout for ETSU. 97-87, 42 seconds and change. Customers demand high quality and low price. They don't want a trade-off, they want it all. My grandfather had this philosophy, I have this philosophy. We give everybody the best quality they can have at the best possible price. With ProWatch, you get the whole package, AT&T quality and a competitive price. We have papaya from Hawaii, we have blood oranges from Italy, clementines from Morocco. We have cheese from almost every country that, that has a cow. With AT&T ProWatch, the more he calls, the higher the discount. I've got enough headaches keeping my business going 12 hours a day, 14 hours a day, and I can't be worried about my long distance service. AT&T has clear connections, quality facts, and the calls go through faster. The quality isn't there, it's not a bargain. We have an expression, delivery truck goes two ways. If it isn't our quality, it goes back to where it came from. You build up trust through years and years of delivering value. We can make a difference. AT&T, call us. You're about to see how Goodyear is changing all season driving right before your eyes. Introducing AquaTread, only from Goodyear. AquaTread's advanced design channels water out of your way for dependable all-season traction, especially in the rain when you may need it most. AquaTread, the newest reason why we say the best tires in the world have Goodyear written all over them. This schedule is a nightmare. I need to recharge my batteries. Driving isn't fun anymore. The 1992 Eldorado by Cadillac. It could change the way you think about American automobiles. If a mysterious mountain man Arthur. snags you a trout and gives you bear hugs, he could be just another animal. Arthur? All new Northern Exposure Monday. Along with Quinn Buckner and Curry, Kirkpatrick, Greg Gumbel back at the Omni in Atlanta. 42.4 seconds remaining. Michigan with a 10-point lead. And 42 seconds away from a trip to Lexington. Greg, if they play like this, they're going to be tough to beat. I don't care who plays them. Michigan has gotten the ball where they needed to. to play smartly, need to get the ball inside and, and been able to do that. And I tell you what, they have really defended very well. I mean... It wasn't until all of a sudden the three points started going for East Tennessee State that they had a shot at this thing, and they, and they really didn't have one. But you can see the patience of them. Steve Fisher is showing his approval of the way they play. And I have been impressed with how they knew how to be patient. They watched that Arizona game, and they knew if you swing the ball and take the time, you can get any shot you want. making a game out of it there. I mean, it was always been a game, but time is a ticking, and they're still doing it. Juwan Howard, who has had a big game here today. Boy, East Tennessee State, we told you they rained three-pointers on Arizona Friday. They've hit one of their last 13 three-point shots, 11 of 30 on the day. And Michael Talley just took that one away and was fouled in the backcourt. Michael Towns, the guy, Greg, they didn't even know was going to play today. And he turned out to, to be as valuable as they thought he would be. He's one of the guys that had to give up his starting spot so they could start to find freshmen. And he's been able to come back after being injured and make a, a significant contribution in that he could give Jalen Rose a break from having to handle the basketball. In addition to that, he's a pretty good foul shooter. Number 34, Chris Setter, comes in to replace Chris Weber. You can see this young man is happy about the way they've gone through this. 30 points, 9 rebounds for Chris Weber and 4 blocked shots. I mean, he went all the way down and gave everybody a pat on the back, came back, gave a couple more.
give Jawan Howard out of the game. Get it, let him get a, a well-deserved round of applause as Chip Armour comes in and takes his place. Jawan Howard, one happy camper. Pelfrey. And the foul is on number 23, Lauren Riddick. <laughs> well, Chris gets a chance. Chris Seddick gets a chance to get on the scoreboard. <laughs> Of course, you get into the box score with a foul, too, don't you? Yeah, you can get that with a hat. <laughs> and now both coaches emptying their benches for the final 17.6. The, the game against Oklahoma State, I think, will be a good game, Greg. And I'll tell you why. There but, goes Greg Dennis, Quinn. As Dennis is on his way out and had a, an outstanding career and gets a round of applause. 31 points, 6 rebounds. Greg Dennis goes 6'11". Is he a pro prospect, Quinn? Well, I really don't know. What he's got to be able to work on, first of all, is, are the weights. I mean, he's, he's obviously very thin, but what he, he, at 6'11", he's got to be able to go out and guard people because it, there's no doubt that he's able to shoot because he can shoot the three-pointer, so he can shoot the shots. So there's no question about that. But I was talking about the matchup with uh, Oklahoma State. As we watch Chris Setter, normally a right-hander shoot a left-hand free throw. Two of them. <laughs> Oklahoma State is a patient team both on both sides of the court. Offensively, they'll stay patient, and they'll make you work. And defensively, they'll make you work. I think that'll be a very good test for both clubs, but particularly for Michigan, as they grow and mature into so their talent and their experience match up. Three-pointer by Silvers. the buzzer the shot by Jason Bosser doesn't fall but Michigan has moved on to Lexington Kentucky 102 to 90 is the score and again just just as impressive a team and, and you know the, the thing about these freshmen Quinn and, and right now we hate to refer to them as freshmen first year players as you like to call them is that they can be so up and down and when they come out like this then they're just absolutely frightening I'll tell you what if you don't go through the to the book that you get like you come in and you get the book with the teams on it and you don't look at the year on these guys you're not necessarily sure that they're freshmen by the way they play. I mean, because they got, they have the talent to be very, very competitive in any game. They showed some composure today. They came out and played a team with a totally different style because you don't get to see a lot of teams necessarily play like this in the Big Ten. So they came out and played a team that was shooting up threes. They shut that off. They recovered. They played very solid basketball. They had momentary lapses where they tried to score too quickly, but they were even able to get themselves back composed out of that. And if you need any further proof as to what might happen or what might not happen in this tournament, Kansas has been knocked off today. And boy, you can just you can just have anything happen to you in this tournament. Our final score, Michigan 102, East Tennessee State 90. You've been watching CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA.